call the meeting to order. We're the Central Business Architecture Commission. And um, the first order of business in tonight's meeting is um, proposed replacement windows on building at 55 State Street over by Cooper's Dairyland. App ID 31B-277. Rich is probably going to make a presentation for us, and um, I'm going to ask you to come up to the podium there. And, and um, the mics are very directional, so uh, don't speak directly into the microphone. Everybody will hear you. Um, I'm Richard Cooper. The microphone more towards your mouth, and um, let me turn it on first. <laughs> oh, yes, that would help. Is it green? Yeah. The, Cooper. I live at 136 South Main Street in Florence. I'm the owner of Cooper's Dairyland, which is the owner of this property on the corner of State and Center Street. Um, so this is a three-story three um, Victorian-style house. Um, we think it was built in uh, somewhere between 1860 and 1880. Um, it currently has um, four occupants, all uh, commercial space, uh, one on the first floor, two on the second, one on the third floor professional offices, and the windows are drastically in need of replacement. They're um, a mixed match. Most have uh, triple track uh, storm windows, but they're they're very drafty. A lot of the, um, the double hung windows don't open and close properly, so we're looking to replace them. Um, I have Adam here from, from Palo Windows um, who can speak about the particulars um, of the Questions or comments? Probably um, have um, your expert come and tell us about the windows. So, uh, just a quick correction. Uh, my, my name is Dan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I represent Hello Windows. I'm the replacement sales manager for uh, the region around here, and we're looking to replace 36 windows in this building. Uh, currently, we don't know the historic significance of the house, being that it is a central business district, so we're just doing our due diligence here. Um, currently, the windows are, most of them are in disrepair, um, very drafty. Some of them yeah, manageable, uh, but, but certainly there's a large number of them that uh, really should be replaced. So we're proposing and we're seeking approval to use our, um, our vinyl window in this application. And one of the big things that we wanted to discuss here was the grill pattern. Um, current grill pattern in this building is just kind of a hodgepodge of no grills, two over two, six over six. So there's no consistency throughout the building. Uh, turning that one off. And We are, we are uh, in addition to the grill I'm going to show you in a second here, we're looking to um, make things consistent throughout the building um, just so that, you know, there, there's that uh, room. And the proposal is to actually use a grill between the glass, which is this one right here. It's very common for a replacement window um, grill maintenance, and it still maintains the integrity of the uh, energy efficiency actually sees, exceeds energy efficiency, so it'll definitely tighten up the house, lowering its energy costs and whatnot. So we would seek approval for this specific grill pattern, uh, sorry, grill style. Uh, they would vary window to window, six over six, four over four for the smaller ones, um, but it would be this vinyl window, upper sash, lower sash. Allowed to. Mm -hmm. the, the formality. Can we have questions right now, or? Sure. I mean, basically, whenever the presentation is done, then the. So, question, go ahead. Well, first of all, are you speaking to the mic? Yeah. Are you seeing yeah. the grid patterns the same as what's there? Like you said, there's a combination of a one over one, six over six. Or are they staying consistent with what's there, or are you uniformly kind of like create an order? 
we would like to create order and, right. and have them be uniform throughout. Um, you have um, the same elevations you have uh, on the side, you have grills that are two over two, and right next to it are six over one. So there's no consistency. So yes, we would, we would look to make that uniform through the entire building. Noticed, I think the windows, the sash and frames are painted like a dark pinkish reddish color now. If I, is that true? Sure, yes. Are are the new windows going to be colored or are they all going to be white vinyl? They would be this white vinyl. Both inside and out. Well, the outside is the significant. If they're installed, do you plan on removing all of the storm screens and restoring the trim and painting it? Yes. You want me to read them in, or do you want to just look at them? That, actually, can I see that again? I thought, um, that you wrote? Oh, I was looking the, at this. The staff recommendation. He's on over here. Yeah, that's just a summary um, of what they're interested in doing. And then um, there is a provision for the guidelines for approving something that's sort of outside of the guidelines if they can meet those standards in that. So I didn't um, make a formal recommendation for you all because I think be important for you all to evaluate that and sort of think about the so I'll just read the um, summaries because I think they're helpful. The owner seeking permission to replace the owner seeking permission to replace the original windows with uh, divided lights with vinyl clad windows that have flat grills between the glass, so that's the difference. You know, we have the depth, and now it's going to be the flat grills inside, so, you know, it's easy cleaning and energy. Um, the project, as quoted, is for the solid white vinyl grill uh, window with grills between the glass. Um, Mr. Cooper, along with Pella Windows, are seeking approval. And let me read this other one really quick. Um, the proposed window replacement does not util utilize snap-in grills, but would eliminate the depth and the shadow that exists with the true divided lights of the original windows, which could also be achieved with true simulated divided lights. What does that mean? Like the divided lights are the... the well, let me ask, is it, is it possible to have the, um, like a... A divided a divider placed on the sur outside surface of the window, so it looks more oh, like yeah. the real thing. That is uh, currently all um, they're called simulated divided light grills. Mm -hmm. They're they're permanently affixed to the interior and exterior. Permanently, um, currently Pella has suspended all production on that due to you know the current situation that we are in, and that suspension is indefinite. So we don't know at any time when they're coming back. They were available at the beginning of the year, but due to supply um, and lack of resources, they've... Are Pell is not doing any FDLs right now? Not in vinyl, no. There are solutions for us that we could pursue, but... Um, you know, so I was wondering with an FDL if they did um, one side only to make it more cost effective, like an outside only SDL. They're not doing any uh, anything that's final. They're not even doing the removable grills any longer. So it's either between the glass or um, aluminum, which is a different product altogether. Yeah. And they have no plans to bring that back when the supply situation improves. Not that we're aware of. No. What's the name of the vinyl line again from Pella? It's Pella's Pella's 250 series. Okay. So. Did the 250 series ever offer an SDL? They did, yeah. Like a vinyl applied grill? Yes. It was eliminated 
earlier this year around the June, July timeframe. Okay. And then Carolyn goes on to recommend that there was storm windows anyway, so it gave that flat appearance. Mm -hmm. Is there some other product that you make that has that does have divided lights that are on the more on the, that are on the surface? There, there is other products that we make. It would be switching to a completely different line altogether, um, and this, the cost um, increase is significant, uh, nearly double what the project is right now. From an economic standpoint, um, this is the point. Right. Probably around 90000 or something like that. Very good. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's eighty six. Eighty six thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Difference. Oh, the, the total. The cost, yeah. yeah. As it is now, now there's forty three. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so Literally it's a forty thousand yeah. yeah. wow. dollar difference. Do any of you have any other questions? As the newest member, I have a question about, you know, is there any sort of precedent for this? I'm sorry. Is there any sort of precedent for this situation? Have you guys made any decisions about window replacements um, recently that are, that are similar to this? discussion about creating the last window replacement the committee required the simulated divided lights but um, again it was sort of a, it was a different situation I think there were fewer windows it was also um, I think it was it was also a city building I believe um, but no know as well that whatever decision you make is on a project by project basis and it doesn't set precedence for another project coming in. So you could evaluate and say, um, you know, the circum the financial circumstances or there are other burdens that the applicant has in trying to restore or you know renovate a building and make it more energy efficient. Does it have a negative impact on the um, which is what those paragraphs in the guidelines are really speaking to is allowing the flexibility for the committee if there's information presented for a very specific case um, in which it might make sense to not hold strictly. You don't have to worry about that setting a precedent for future applicants who come forward because each situation could be different. I mean, um, you know, the total number of windows on this house, it's also on a corner, so you've got three sides that are visible, right. and so you know, in another situation, you might just have a front facade, and maybe those windows could be true simulated divided lights, whereas the other ones, since they're not visible, might have a different, you might have a different evaluation, but just as an example. Another thing to consider is that this is not on, on Main Street or Pleasant Street. Uh, it's, um, that definitely makes it you know if if this were if this were on main street we we look at it differently Can you hold your sample up again for a second absolutely want me to bring it over no just hold it up what i'm just curious about is is that glass seems to be very shaded or dark sorry joe uh that you know and i'm wondering is that typical it seems to me it makes the 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 grill, it, it doesn't bring it out the same white as a frame. You have a very good eye. <laughs> right. This, um, it would not, this is a sample. Um, this is actually a triple glazed window. The other one, the ones that we're proposing are double glazed. So there is another layer of glass in front of this grill. So if I turned it around, that's Ooh, more of the image. Yeah. This is the inside, this is the outside. So what you'd be seeing is essentially this without that third layer of glass. Right. Very heavy too. That's why I know. Well, I can appreciate the uh, financial ramifications of the project, and I understand 
your reasoning for that for sure. So. Any other questions from the committee? Are there any questions from the general public out there? Um, would somebody like to make a motion? Well, actually, we have to close the public hearing first. So, we're, um, somebody like to make a motion for that? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I hear a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Okay, the public hearing is now closed. So, we have if there's any. Uh, we have um, the ability to discuss this further if you want, or somebody could make a motion, or both. Well, just as a comment, I'm really not in favor of it, but I would make an exception in this case, just because I understand money is a right. huge amount of investment on the owner's part. Um, so I will make a motion to allow the uh, replacement windows to the uh, have a grill between the glass type of uh, glazing situation. Do you want to um, add any conditions, of, like for instance, about um, restoring the um, exterior after the storm windows are taken off? Uh, yeah, I'll include that. Uh, and and that. Let me reword this, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we allow the grill between the glass replacement windows to be installed uh, with the condition that the storm screen windows be removed so that we can see the full window. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. You are, the motion is passed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Before we go on to the next thing, I realized I was supposed to ask if any member of the public had any business other, uh, uh, other than what's on the agenda tonight or anything. All right. In that case, we're going to move on. I have to bring the agenda back up on my phone here. Next item is um, a request from yeah, Smith College to um, restore an original building at 14 Green Street, map ID 32D-52. And um, so uh, you... Sorry. Um, I should um, explain for everyone, because this is... Kind of, this is not typical of what you're reviewed. So this is not actually a posted public hearing. The request is to come in under an exemption, which is allowed through staff review or chair. So previously, so in other scenarios, there, there's a section of, of ordinance that allows the restoration of a building to its original character if there isn't anything um, changing from the historic element of that. And certainly when it's not visible from the street, that's easy. Staff can make that determination. Um, in this case, there's a bump out that's on the back of this building. That a portion of it, if you're standing just in the right angle on West Street, you can see the side because it's a bump out that was put in the back afterwards. It's not part of the original building. But um, the owner, which is Smith College, wants to restore the building after this fire, but not pull that addition off and not put it back. And so the question is, can this, is this exempt from review, meaning you, know, you don't have to have a full public hearing? And so since we don't have a form, uh, since, there, since you all did not create a subcommittee or designate someone other than the chair to review this, I just posted it on this agenda tonight. So the question before you is, do you think this falls under the exemption? If it does, then the applicant can go on their merry way. If you don't think it falls under the exemption and you want it to be formally submitted as an application, then you would give that notice to the applicant and then they come back and they formally notice we send out the public hearing notice, they come back on a scheduled public hearing. Okay. Thank you for um, clarifying that. Is, um, I guess we should discuss that. 
Anybody have? Um, anybody want to? Uh, I I don't think it's relevant. I mean that that. Well, first of all, I don't quite understand this photograph. How much are you removing of this bump out? The entire thing. In the back. But when I'm looking at this photo, it, I don't, it doesn't right, so read, I don't quite I'll understand. I'll show you, I'm, I'll show you, there was a recent picture that. My name is Tom Hartman. Okay. Oh, I can share that. Um, is it like part of the built like a room, or is it just the uh, Carolyn <laughs> well, I'm going to put it here, <laughs> um, and I'll try to get it. Whoops. Is anyone coming up here, just to explain? So that whole addition is going to get removed? Yeah. So this is uh, I don't know, 12 feet by 16 feet, and if you zoom okay. in in that area, you can see the brick coursing doesn't align. Yeah. So no, it's not an addition yeah. from, I don't know, after 1930. And you know, after the fire that happened in East Heaven Hot Tub space and the cost of doing that, I mean it's literally falling apart. Okay, yeah. Um and then the second piece is we're gonna bring a new gas line around the back of the building. This lab needs to go, this needs to go. So they both actually want that extra space. Going back in that. No. Hold on. Um, well, this is just open discussion. I, I don't have an issue with that whatsoever. It's act on. Right. It's, it's not affecting the process. Yeah. And if they were to put an addition on in the future, that would be a separate thing. That would be correct. If it were visible from the street, then it would trigger a hearing. But if they tucked it in so it would, well, it wasn't even visible from West Street, then it wouldn't come before you. Yeah. I should say we will most likely come back to you once we know what we're doing with the project. If the more you talk, the more you should oh, okay. speak into the microphone. I, I don't have any major concerns about the view from the street being affected dramatically. Somebody, so we need a motion for this to grant the exemption, right? Right. So would somebody like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we grant the ex exemption. Exemption? exemption. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, to allow this uh, addition to be removed building. That. Okay. All in favor? Or actually, was there any discussion? No. All in favor? Right. The motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Do. And we have one final piece of business. That is the um, O'Connell developers have requested another 60-day extension to the um, hearing on St. John Cantus Church. Um, uh, the, in, I should, I'm sorry, I should say continuation. They re requested another 60-day continuation. So that would mean they would come back before us in um, uh, January, uh, for our, our January meeting. Correct. So um, you would, your January meeting is January 4th. So you could move to continue the hearing at 6.30. Um, uh, 60 days is a little bit beyond that, but of course, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it's either here or there, there. It's essentially a couple of months, so that puts you in January. So you could do that you could, according to the request. But you would have to do it to a date and time. Somebody like to make a motion? I think with the 
motion would be Continue the hearing until January 4th at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would make that motion. As a chair, I'm not supposed to make the motion. Oh. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to continue the hearing to January 2nd. 4th. 4th at 6.30 p.m. Is there a second for this motion? I'll second the motion. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, do we need to go over any minutes or anything like that? Uh, I don't think I got them out the door to you. So no. Okay. In that case, and that's all we have. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Sorry, I beat you, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. All in favor? 